Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Sairma SJS Technology Limited Q3 of 24 Earnings Conference Call, hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participants' line will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Aniruddha Doshi from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Manuja. On behalf of ICICI Securities, we welcome you all to Q3 FI24 Results Conference Call of Sirma SJS Technology. We have with us senior management of the company. Now I hand over the call to Mr. Nikhil Gupta, head of investor relations, to introduce the management and take the conference call forward. Thanks and over to you, Nikhil. Thank you, Anirudh. Uh, hi, very good morning to all. Uh, welcome to Seva SGS third quarter fiscal 2024 earnings call. We have with us today Mr. J.S. Kujral, managing director, Mr. Jayesh Toshi, director, Mr. Satendra Singh, chief executive officer, and Mr. Vijay Agrawal, Chief Financial Officer, Sirma SGS, to discuss the performance of the company during the, the third quarter of fiscal 2024, followed by a detailed question and answer session. During this call, certain statements that will be made are forward-looking, which involve several risks, uncertainties, assumptions, and other factors that can cause results to differ materially from those in such forward-looking statements. All forward-looking statements made herein are based on the information presently available to the management and the company does not undertake to update any forward-looking statement that may be made in the course of this call. In this regard, please do review the disclaimer statements in the earnings release and all other factors that can cause the difference. I will now hand over the, this call to Mr. J.S. Kuchal, Managing Director of Sirma SGS. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to host this uh, Q3 earning call for FI 23-24. The three quarters, uh, April to December of this year, have seen a robust growth of 48% in revenues to 2,062 crores, which is almost touching the annual figures which we did last time. So the growth is intact. This despite a flattish Q3 which is not a reflection of our annual growth prospects. We had some major push out of uh, orders, sales, uh, dispatches during Q3, which resulted in a flattish Q3 compared to uh, Q2. Year on year, we have grown in revenues. Our EBITDA for the nine months stand at 6.6%. Uh, 48% growth has resulted, this 48% growth has resulted in a saving of 2.6 to 2.7% of uh, overhead, which uh, has uh, partially offset the increase in the material margin because of the change in product mix. What I would like to share with you is that uh, the industry profile of margins, gross material margin of various industrial segments are stable and are not seeing any major contraction. Our exports have grown by 18% year on year for the nine months. And if I was to see Q3 of this year compared to Q3 of last year, they have gone a significantly higher percentage, which is close to about 50%. We have orders in hand of 4,500 crores to be executed over the next 12 to 15 months. During these nine months, we have commissioned our new facilities at uh, Gurgaon. We have put up a new facility at Noida. And we are also in the process of setting up a new facility at Babel and Pune. Cumulatively, these facilities will give us an additional 3.5 lakh square feet of area, which will cater to the future growth prospects of the company. For an EMS company, the basic capacity is the S&T. And between April of this year 
and December of this year, we have increased our SMT placement capacity from 3.2 million components per hour to approximately 6.3, which is almost a 95% increase, a doubling of the capacity. So this will help us in achieving the growth trajectory which we are envisaging and have budgeted for our company. For the current year, we maintain our uh, guidance given earlier of uh, achieving 3,000 crores of uh, revenue with uh, a beta of uh, approximately 7 to 7.5%. For the next year, we expect this growth trajectory to be maintained. So we expect that next year will also grow in the same level as we have grown this year, which is between 40-45%. And this will primarily be led by uh, the rebounding of the healthcare sector, which we still expect to have uh, significant contributions in the coming year, automotive, industrial, and consumer. During this period, we have onboarded in the last quarter senior resources to drive various business verticals. For example, we have hired a CEO for our RFID business to drive this vertical uh, because this is a high margin accretive uh, uh, vertical. We have also hired a chief people officer to uh, sort of take the organization to the next level. Uh, I would also like to share with you that we have hired during this quarter McKenzie, who will be assisting us in driving operational efficiencies and growth trajectories over the coming years, the results of which will be visible not in the short term, but in the long term. Before I hand over to Bijay Agarwal, our CFO, to delve, on, uh, delve in detail on the financials, I would now request Sinder Singh, our CEO, to introduce himself and share his thoughts. And then uh, Vijay will uh, share the financial details with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bajal. Good morning, everyone on the call. Uh, good to be here in our uh, Q3 FY24 results call. Uh, as Mr. Bajal said, there is a strong uh, growth uh, which we have had over the last three quarters. We expect to continue uh, 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 similar uh, trajectory as Mr. Gujral covered in his uh, remarks. Uh, at this point, I think uh, Sirma SGS is in a phase wherein we're investing, investing in our ability to deliver the future. Uh, we have invested in hiring the leadership talent, the CEO for one of the business units, the chief people officer, and we are working through uh, bridging some of the uh, you know areas where we believe we could you know enhance our capabilities. In addition, we are continuing to invest in our manufacturing facilities, uh, the four facilities Mr. Gujral mentioned, along with the SMT capacity. So essentially, we are in an investment cycle wherein we are investing in our people, uh, people process and manufacturing capabilities. We, uh, we as a company and I as an individual professional continue to remain very long and very bullish on manufacturing. With this, I'll say thank you and turn it over to Bijay for his uh, coverage of numbers. Over to you, Bijay. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'll now take you through my brief financials for the quarter and nine month period ended December 2023. Our revenue for the nine month is approximately 2,028 crores, up by almost 48% year on year. And same way for the quarter, it is 709 crores, up by 38% year on year. Out of this revenue, almost 27% is being contributed through my export sales. Export sales for the quarter is almost 200 crore rupees for this quarter. ODM revenue for this nine month period is almost 19% for us. The gross margin for the quarter ended and nine month period is approximately 24% for us. Our ex operational expenses for the quarter are slightly higher in this particular quarter, mainly because of the reasons as explained by our MD and CEO. 
some push out of revenues and some upfront investments towards the organizational building, team building across multiple focus areas and geographies. Our operating EBITDA for the quarter is approximately 41 crores and for the nine month it is 133 crores which is 6.6% of operating EBITDA margin. PBT for the quarter is 27 crores and again for the nine month it is 107 crores which is again 5.2% of PBT margin. Similar way PAT for the quarter is 20 crores and for the nine month it is approximately 79 crores which is 3.8% of PAT margin. My net working capital days for the quarter is 72 days, slightly higher than the last quarter where we were running at around 70 days. So two days difference mainly because of some uh, additional inventory being carried for the business over here. Now coming to the order book which we have in our hand, currently we are carrying an order book of approximately 4700 to 4800 crores of total order book, out of which near about 4500 crores which need to be serviced in next 12 months period. And again, if we see the breakup of this order book, about 80 to 20 percent is for towards auto sector and maybe about 40 to 45 percent is towards consumer sector and similar way about 30, 35 percent is for industrial balance is for healthcare, IT and railway segment as of now. Again, on the debt and treasury side, we have a debt of approximately 494 crores as on December end against which we are carrying a total treasury position of 100 or 405 crores or maybe 428 crores. So my net debt position as on quarter end is 65 crores. Out of this debt also near about 88 crore is, is a long term debt, balance 400 crore approximately towards working capital debt. Coming to the capex number, in the nine month period we have spent almost 240 crores of capex towards multiple different facilities and we expect another 40 to 50 crores of capex spend in the upcoming quarter. This is quarter four of this financial year. We still have about 200 odd crores of unutilized IPO funds towards capex, which we expect to spend in another next 12 to 15 month period. With this, I will now hand it over to Nikhil to open the forum for the Q&A session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vijay. Uh, Manuja, over to you for the Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahul Kajare from Hightown Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, gentlemen, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. I have a couple of questions. I'll start with the revenue uh, and margin, you know, which were a uh, tad lower uh, during this quarter. Can you talk about the reasons uh, specifically uh, for uh, lower revenue and margin in this particular quarter? Uh, you know, given you had a very strong order backlog, and therefore, uh, you know, there was a very clear roadmap in terms of execution. And I think you also indicated earlier, you know, that H2 normally is 55% of your revenue. And I think the guidance that you have uh, just talked about, that basically talks about, uh, you know, being able to do about 900 to 1,000 crores of revenue in the fourth quarter with 10% EBITDA margin. So I want to understand which are the segments that you are confident that will drive this 10% margin. So that's the first question. Thank you. See, this uh, quarter we had a push out in automotive and consumer segment which led to a decline of revenue and once the revenue declines the overhead being fixed it has a direct impact on uh, margins so for clarity for example if we consider the nine months figure where we have grown by 49 percent uh, operating overheads have come down by 2.6 percent 
but if i was to compare q3 with the q2 my overheads have actually gone up to approximately by uh, they have gone up to from 15.5 to 17% so one and a half percent increase in overhead especially because the revenues are lower we were confident uh, that uh, we would cover recover this uh, revenue and for your information in the month of january we have done a revenue of 362 crores which is the highest ever and we expect that uh, whether it is 360 or 330 that's a separate issue but the 300 breach has been done and it will continue in the future so this q3 is a one off operation on missing the revenue growth though in nine months we have grown by 48% and this shows the resilience of the business that despite a flattish quarter nine months revenue has still shown a very healthy growth of 48%. So we are very confident that going forward in Q4 of this year and the coming quarters of F524-25, the revenues will be met. Honestly, quarter on quarter, meeting the last figure or the last two digits or whatever, it's a it's a, it's a it's a, a thing we are we are focused on, but we are not too sort of. Uh, uh, worried if one quarter is uh, going because of a special circumstance what we are focused on is what is the long term picture is the long term picture the long term growth trajectory the customer onboarding penetration in different geographies is that intact or not on that it is very intact i hope that answers you talk, you yeah you talked about push out is it possible you can quantify the <clears throat> push out of revenue in uh, this particular quarter i i just ask vijay to share that figure with you it's about 100 uh, 110 crores okay so my second question is on uh, you know uh, you talked about pretty strong order backlog at almost uh, 4500 crores uh how much is export out of it and because i remember export is something which will aid margin expansion for this company See, we expect uh, order backlog. I'll just ask uh, Vijay to pull out the figures of the order backlog of exports. But if exports account for about 27, 28% of our revenues, I expect the export should be in the same proportion, maybe a little less. Uh, this month, this year, we have done nine months. We have done 550 crores of exports, and going forward, we expect the exports to grow further in the coming year. Uh, on the back of uh, uh, renewed uh, growth in healthcare and the customers which we onboarded during the first 9 months of this year they would start yielding series revenues in the coming year the figure on the ex- exact export orders in hand out of this 4500 crores up to over it will take around it will be shared by today approximately we have 20% of export orders in the overall open order book there and in the next quarter also we are expecting somewhere around 220 to 30% of export in the next quarter so that would translate into export business of export orders of about 900 crores or over the 4500 crores yeah. sir uh, uh, you know i'm you know uh, while you have said you know that working capital will actually you know decline as we go along you know uh, We have not seen that really happen. So where are we on that journey? And I think connected with this, uh, I also want to understand. You know, there was a litigation where you settled uh, some amount. Uh, is it possible you can share some details of that litigation and what is it that you have da- done in terms of risk management so that these kind of things do not reoccur? You know, because as the re- order book revenue quantum goes, you know, I think uh, if there are litigation, this number can also increase. So what are the risk management? tools that or uh, uh, things that you have put in place so that these things do not reoccur see uh, we had projected inventory go as a net working capital going down which is slightly two days up uh, but in absolute terms if we see the inventory and the net working capital has gone up now if a 100 crore 110 crore revenue gets pushed out it would be lying in the shop floor and with average material cost of 70 75% or whatever is that approximately it is what Uh, uh, uh about uh, 74% 75% it means a direct hit 
all inventories to that extent. So, on a long-term basis, we still maintain that we said that we try to bring down to 70 days. We are still holding that and gliding it down to 60 days. Quarter on quarter, meeting every target at times in this dynamic business environment uh, is a challenge. What we concentrate on is, is the business outlook from that customer stable for the coming quarters or not? And there we don't see any challenge. Quarter on quarter, it will always be there, some odd uh, thing, not of this magnitude, but we started off with 90 days at the beginning of the year, and then we have come down to 70 days last quarter. This time it's 72 days, and I think in March we should be below 70 days. Now on the contingent liability or maybe that litigation thing, this is an eight-year or maybe probably nine-year-old litigation which was going on with one of the customers. Again, regarding this thing, this was always disclosed in our contingent liabilities all across the period. This was reflecting as a contingent liability worth around approximately 6 crore rupees in our balance sheet previously. We settled it out of the court with that particular party during quarter two of this financial year and overall impact is 1.35 crore is what we have agreed to pay. And this was already factored in our financials in quarter two of this financial year. And again, because it was a litigation, it was already disclosed and related, in fact, or related, I would say measures internally from a risk point of view was always been taken care of now there are. Sure. Uh, thank you very much and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, Please limit your questions to one per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we will request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Alok Deshpande from Nuama Institutional Equity. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, good morning everyone uh, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is about the order book. Uh, you mentioned uh, an order book of about 4,500 crores. Uh, would it be possible to share uh, the split uh, of the order book uh, between the different verticals that you have? I think I remember you mentioning about 40-45% uh, is this consumer. That's what you mentioned in last quarter. Uh, and then based on that, uh, the guidance that we are giving on margins for next year, which is 7 to 7.5%, then, uh, you know, before uh, before you bought Jory uh, Digital, you had a margin which was 9-10%, and Jory is about 35% margin business. Then, uh, are we looking at a scenario where, you know, the, the, the business margins or the blend mix is taking the margins down? So, so order book and margins are the two questions that I have. Okay. Uh, the breakup of the order between the various vertical and the segments, I think, will Vijay will share with you uh, after my reply on the margin profile. See, again, as I said in my, in my opening statement, what we are focused on is maintaining or increasing the margin profile of each vertical. Now, each vertical would have its own margin profile. A automotive vertical margin profile cannot be compared to a consumer vertical margin profile. And if tomorrow, for example, we were to do the IT business, the margin profile would be entirely different. So what we internally work is that, A, is my vertical profile sustained, stable, or is it getting under stress? Then within the vertical, we look at the customers. So the margin profile, if the product mix changes, would undergo a change. And keeping into account the profile of potential sale mix in the coming year, we believe that with the mix which we have envisaged for the next year, that is FY24-25, we should be in the range of 7 to 8% beta for 24-25. Now, on the order book breakup, I can just take you through. Broadly, the largest contributor here is consumer, which is of almost 40 to 45% is being contributed by consumer segment here. 
देर आफ्टर इंडस्ट्रियल सेगमेंट विच इज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग ऑलमोस्ट थर्टी टू थर्टी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द ऑर्डर बुक एंड देन कम्स ऑटो विच इज एटीन टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट एंड देन वी सी हेल्थ केयर आई टी एंड रेलवे इज द बैलेंस हेल्थ केयर साइटली हायर दिस टाइम इज अबाउट एट टू टेन परसेंट इज वॉट वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग आउट ऑफ द हेल्थ केयर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर ऑर्डर बुक Uh, and Vijay, uh, uh, the business from uh, Jory would be part of this uh, healthcare uh, vertical, right? The other. I say forty-eight hundred crore. This includes Jory also. No, the the healthcare includes uh, health healthcare part, which you mentioned, eight to ten percent. Uh, yes. That will include Jory also. Absolutely. Okay, understood. Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen, for the response. Is very helpful. Thank you, Alok. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Aditya Bagor from Tata Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hi sir. Uh, good morning uh, to everyone. Uh, thank you so much for taking my question. Um, for for Aditya, congratulations. We are very enthused by the overall growth momentum that that we have maintained so far. Um, my my question is on EBITDA margins, right? So. when we go back let's say a year or two um, with somewhat of a similar mix we we used to do close to 28 29% uh, gross margins flowing into a double digit sort of a ebitda margin profile uh, my question is uh, over the the last 9 months and and running into fy25 um, is there a structural change in terms of thought process to chase let's say a auto or a consumer set of customers uh, which are essentially driving a negative mix for us so my question is uh, is there a change in thought process for us to to drive a particular set of customers no i don't think there is a change in uh, the mindset to drive a particular set of customers we being in business it's a management call or business call that if a opportunity is existing in a particular segment should that opportunity be taken up or not taken up now when we take up a opportunity we evaluate various parameters for example if i was a 1000 crore company my buying power the muscle power with my vendors the negotiation power with my vendors would be quite different if i was to buy material worth 3000 crore rupees so while a particular segment has its own margin profile the positive rub off effect on the overall business as we grow are there so it is not that the management is changing its focus from automotive to uh, consumer automotive we have grown Nine months we have grown uh, of, uh, almost like uh, just a sec. Nine months uh, we have grown by sixty-seven percent in automotive, whereas we have grown by ninety percent in uh, consumer. In absolute figures, we have grown. Uh, we have done a digital automotive crore business of one hundred sixty-eight crore. So it's not that the focus has shifted. it's just that a business which is available formidable names global players which bring in uh, sort of manufacturing expertise we have chair we have taken that business it's not one at the expense of the cost of the other right um understood sir that's that's very helpful um can you also clarify uh, i think you made some comments earlier in terms of raw material cost uh, so when i look at the rm margins right uh, your gross profit margin you come down from 29% to 24% uh, is that purely on mix or is there some other elements to that as well so that's what i said we very minutely closely monitor first the vertical wise gross material margin and then the within the vertical the customer margin this change is purely purely because of change in the product mix and if i was to see if by 9 months it has gone up by gone down by about uh, 5% and my consumer business has gone up by 90% so the heavy reliance of the consumer business is bringing down this gross material margin sir sure, 
Loud and clear. Thank you so much for this. Uh, just a small suggestion, sir. If you can pro increase in material cost by about five percent. Because of the operating leverages which the consumer business has brought in, has saved me 2.7 percent, 2.6 percent on overheads. So while on the gross material margin we see a, a negative, on the operating margins or uh, overheads we see a positive. So the net impact could be uh, half of that. Understood, sir. This is very clear. Uh, just a small suggestion, sir. Uh, if possible, um, it, it would be great if you can articulate a medium-term strategy, not necessarily right now, but maybe heading into FY25, if you can articulate a medium-term strategy, uh, you know, a three-year, five-year outlook, uh, that would be very helpful, sir. Point well taken, but I'll tell you the strategy is very clear. To grow at an industry plus rate year on year for the next three to five years. So if the industry is growing at 30, 35%, we should be growing at greater than 35%. Understood, sir. Thank you so much and good day, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Sumant Kumar from Motilal Uswal. Please go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, in, in railway, we have seen a 20% kind of degrowth in nine months. So, and we are seeing a higher um, opportunity in railway. And also healthcare, we have only 17% uh, growth. So, what is the outlook for uh, healthcare? And whatever the order book you are getting, it is not showing. We are getting a higher or, higher uh, order book for healthcare as well as for railway. So, can you, can you talk about what are the challenges we are facing in this segment? Okay, I'll come to railways first. Uh, in my last call, I had shared that we had called the RDSO approval uh, for uh, railway signaling equipment, and we had got a business of about 35 crore rupees from uh, there. There was an existing business of 5 crore rupees. We were expecting this 35 crore business, part of it, to be shipped out in uh, by March 24. Unfortunately, because of some component shortages at the global level for very specialized uh, controllers, uh, this sale is being pushed out to the next quarter. This quarter, we should be doing about five crores of railways for the uh, railway signaling equipment. And the railway business, since we have just started off, the base is small. Once the base of the customer goes up over a period of time, then it becomes less immune to fluctuations. If I have two customers in the railways, and if one of them was to get pushed out for material shortage, it has almost a 40... Yeah, is it okay? Yes, sir, please continue. Yeah. So once the base of railway consumer customers expands, the sensitivity to the fluctuation gets diffused uh, on a longer base, and it's less immune to uh, major fluctuations. This will take time because railways is a long gestation uh, business acquisition. With this RDSO approval, we have made the initial breakthrough. Uh, so we expect that uh, in next year, railways should contribute about 70 to 75, 80 crore rupees of revenue at the minimum. And, and about healthcare? Healthcare is uh, essentially, I think, next year's my healthcare business should be approximately uh, 300, 350, 400 crore, 375 to 400 crore rupees business next year. All inclusive, whether it's RFID, whether it is EMS, whatever, whatever is that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Indrajit Agarwal from CLSA Capital Partner. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Two questions from my side. First, uh, the difference that we see in material margin across various businesses, is it offset by better asset turn? The meaning is, uh, are the ROCs across businesses similar or consumer generates a lower ROC than, say, healthcare? See, uh 
the high volume businesses that always have a lower uh, uh, sort of a lower gross retail margin and a higher sector uh it would also have a less impact on working net working capital businesses which are low to medium volume will attract high margins high margins would be higher on a beta but maybe they would not be as high on the asset turn as uh the consumer business so it's a mix and it's not one off against the other and they cannot be compared so a high volume business lower gross retail margins high asset turn and comparatively uh, less working capital involvement net working capital involvement low to high or medium volume businesses they would have comparatively higher gross retail margins they would have lower asset turn and there would be involvement of working capital also so the roc <coughs> so the roc should be similar in the similar range for almost all the verticals across only difference can be wherever we have started a new business there the roc can reflect probably after a full ramp up till the time the full ramp up is happening you can see a slightly lesser or subdued roc during that interim period sure this is helpful my second question is on your ebitda margin guidance of 7 to 8% is there any proportion of other income that is non treasury other income or other operating income that is include, that you are including either in revenue or ebitda this is the operating margin which you are referring to yes and even for the current year whatever when we say 6 or 5.9 there is the operating thing the with other income the margin would be higher the ebitda margin would be higher Okay, that's clear. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Kaur from ICICI Prudential Life Insurance. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just one clarification. Uh, so right now, what would the gross block uh, if you can help us and uh, say by end of FY twenty four or twenty five. uh the uh, possible uh, operational cost block uh, what would that number and uh, just uh, uh, if you can validate the gross asset to gross block asset turnover should be uh, around in the range of uh, 4 to 5 years is uh, at doctor no is it correct understanding uh, i think vijay will share but vijay will just share the figures with you but yes uh, while he is sharing the gross block figure i believe that uh, by the fy25 and over a set term should be upwards of 5 could be closer to 6 from the current i think it's below 5 vijay will share the detail with you after that so my gross block is approximately 700 crore rupees as of now 729 about but out of which there about 150 crores of assets which are there which 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 are not deployed to put to use maybe we have already acquired a facility there in manesar as a new expansion that national facility the expansion work is already going on and similar way the project expenses whatever we have incurred related to hosur location and that project still the time we commission that project all the expenses are there in the cwip and it is not put to use so there will be approximately 150 crores of capex which we have incurred in last 12 to 15 months which is still not resulting or will be delivering anything into the operational performance so far so which can which will be reflecting into going over the next financial year so what i'll request bj is that uh, he should uh, uh, take out the uh, capital work in progress which is just not which is not been put to productive use and share offline with the the people all the uh, uh, panelists what is the set on on the uh, asset actually deployed in production and excluding the cwip when cwip comes into full production the set turn will be calculated with that because that's the true measure of the effectiveness or the efficiency with which uh, the assets are being used no correct that is why i asked for operational cross block uh, fair enough just yeah, one data point uh, nine months cash flow from operation physical and share that would be helpful thank you 
नाइन मंथ ओसीएफ इज ऑलमोस्ट नेगेटिव ईयर फॉर दिस पीरियड बट वी सी इन द फुल ईयर बेसिस वी शुड बी हैविंग अ गुड डिसेंटली पॉजिटिव नंबर इज वॉट आर ओसी बिकॉज देर इज अ इंक्रीमेंटल वर्किंग कैपिटल इन्वेस्टमेंट ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड सो ओवरऑल ओसीएफ इज नेगेटिव एट अराउंड Negative. See, the sale pushout which has happened in December has resulted in an increase in working capital. Understood. Understood. Noted. Okay. Thank you a lot. And all the best. Only want the material. Make sure it it could be in the lying in finished goods or in the the advanced stages of completion. So that's a pushout. So end of year OCR should be positive. That's what we are targeting, and uh, we hope we should be able to deliver a positive OCF beta. Noted. All the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Deepak Krishnan from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I hope you can hear me fine. Yes. Yes. Please continue. Yeah, so I just wanted to sort of understand again on the margin front uh, because essentially, if you look at order book, while healthcare is ramping up with higher margin, but a large part of consumer will be still driving growth. It's 37 percent for nine months, goes up to you know 40, 45 percent, and you know auto is where you're sort of seeing the negative mix impact. So, at short stay, whatever you sort of have a delay in shipment and you know some sort of recovery, you know beyond seven, seven and a half to be kind of. The margin going ahead with this mix, or that is sort of the steady state, and specifically for Q4, the ask rate is pretty high, as closer to 10 percent. So, you know, what gives us confidence that we'll be able to deliver even seven, seven and a half percent for this year also? See, we have mapped out the uh, budget sales which we are envisaging, which we are targeting in FY24 and FY24-25. And it's based on that that we are giving the guidance of seven to eight percent for the next year. Uh, it will be basically on two accounts: a, my assets starting to get optimally utilized, the capacities which we have created this year will uh, start uh, getting optimally utilized next year. So this will give me operating leverage uh, benefits. And then based on the asset profile, the sale profile. We have calculated the gross material margin. That is, this was my sale profile, vertical wise. My gross material margin would be 24 percent, 25 percent, or 26 percent, whatever it is. And then the operating leverages, which will come in with the increased revenues and the assets being sweated more. With that, we have come at a figure of seven to eight percent. And essentially, with seven to eight percent sort of uh, you know margins, uh, what kind of receipts would we finally target? Seventy to seventy sort of working capital days, and so that time we should be seeing FPS generation coming through, right? As well. So sorry, I couldn't get your question. Uh, I'm just saying that seven seven and a half percent you know sort of margins and about you know seventy days of working capital. What kind of receipt profile are we targeting? And do you think that sort of covers that for uh, you know free cash flow generation also over time? Okay, yeah, with this margin, and uh, we are targeting the uh, networking capital to glide down further. The entire the target which is said that our wish list is it should come down to 60 days. We have come down from 90 odd days when we started our journey with the markets. So over the last uh, 18, 20 months, we have come down by almost like 20 days, 18, 20 days, and we expect this to go down. Now, how will it go down? Uh, so there's a rationality behind it. See, the moment I onboard high volume customers, the inventory holdings come down. Doing hundred crores of revenue with say six customers or five customers, the inventory holding will be different than doing hundred crore of revenue with one customer. As my model mix goes down, the inventory levels automatically go down. So when we are scaling up, we are obviously targeting anchor customers, which will give us good uh, uh, annual revenues, so that there is an efficiency built into the inventory holding. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, those are my questions, and uh, best of luck for future quarters. Thank you very much.
The next question is from the line of Chirak Lodaya from ValueQuest Investment Advisor. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, if you can just help us understand with uh, Jowari Digital Performance, how it has been for this quarter and, you know, uh, how is the order book, etc. shaping there? See, Jowari Digital, uh, we are on track with doing what we did last year, approximately the same level of turnover. Uh, next year, we are expecting a decent growth of about 25-30% uh, in the Jowari Digital turnovers. Now, the Jory digital business is quite different than the organic business, which is the EMS, because that's the product-based business. So whenever new products get onboarded, the growth in that particular year will see a higher, steeper uh, trajectory, and then it will come down to the rational, rational trajectory once the... Uh, same products go into two years, and we have a, a decent uh, product line in pipeline which is under approval. So it all depends upon when do we get those approvals, but we expect that Jory Digital next year should be uh, approximately uh, maybe uh, 5% or 6% of our revenues, 5% of our revenues. So it will not be a major contributor to the revenues but it will be a uh, mainstay of the margins. Right. And if you can just call out this quarter performance. Vijay, can you share that? So this quarter we have done almost 30 odd crore rupees of revenues for this quarter through Jerry Dodge and with approximately 30% of EBITDA margin over there. Okay, okay. And uh, apart from this, can you help us understand any new big client or deal we, uh, you would have done in the last two, three months? Uh, see, we have onboarded some very uh, good clients in the industrial space, but the revenues of which will come in the coming quarters. They are high-volume clients. Uh, they are into the industrial, whether it's IoT, energy, automotive, uh, consumer, we are sticking with the current uh, base other than the RFID part. In the consumer EMS, uh, we are with the current level of client. So the new clients which are in pipeline is very strong, and uh, they would yield results in 25-26. The 24-25 projections which we are sharing, the guidance which we are sharing is with clients already onboarded and uh, uh, or sort of uh, order visibility received from that. The new clients which are being onboarded now and in the coming quarters would essentially yield the revenues towards the end of this one is at best this calendar year or at best uh, this financial year, and that is March 25. And the volumes will start in April 25 because all these major clients have a 12 to 18 months gestation period for value for the series production, high volume production. Right. And how, how is the trajectory for healthcare division uh, in export market? What is happening there? See, healthcare, we are, we are uh, very uh, focused on it. And uh, in uh, Johri, for example, we have had a new CEO, and he is coming from Tata Alexi. So he's just joined us up, uh, maybe a month back. So that is the focus to grow that business. And he has grown that business in Tata Alexi from almost scratch to whatever Tata Alexi is doing today in healthcare business. So he's joined us in the month of uh, January. And uh, that's only with the focus on growing the business. And as I said in my last call earning, what we have acquired is not the business of Jory. We have acquired is a platform. And platform is for long-term growth. In terms of base business of healthcare? Sorry? Base, base business of healthcare division, how that would shape up going ahead? This year in Sirma was RFID and that has bounced back. Uh, as I shared in my earlier call, we were to be did only 15 crores in Q1. We did about 35, 36 crores, 33 the Q2. It has started bouncing back. Q3, it has again seen 33 plus crores of business. And it is now still slowly and steadily picking up. So we'll come back to where we were 
two years ago. It has been a year of lull and then a year of recovery. Last year was a degrowth. This year has started coming back to the original level. Right, right. And we are quite confident of you know uh, achieving this three thousand crore uh, number which we have shared earlier. Uh, so Q4 should have that. The delay, what we saw in Q3, right? If we have done uh, 2,000 odd crores up to December, January we have done 362 crores. That's the figure I'm sharing with you. The shipments out are 362 crores. So that gives us the confidence of achieving the 3,000 crore target. Okay, got it. Thank you, Anandana. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Amar Maurya. From Lucky Investment Manager, Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks a lot for the opportunity. Um, sir, what is the kind of asset ton we will be targeting, let's say, at the peak level with the 720 crore of cross block? Vijay, uh, you take that and operational cross block. Peak level, once we ramp up the full capacity there, we are always targeting a asset ton somewhere between 6 to 7 times. That's what. Okay. Okay, six to seven times, got that. And secondly, this seven and a half percent margin which we are looking for is like the margin we should assume for at least like the full, full next two years, three years kind of thing? I think yes. Uh, if the product mix remains the same, if there's a shift away from the consumer, more of other things, the margin could go up. But I think this is the margin profile we should look at considering everything into account. Okay. And thirdly, sir, basically, with this kind of investment, at the internal level, what kind of ROC we would be targeting? Our ROC target is always 25% plus, and if we are able to deliver the desires, 7 to 7.5% of EBITDA margin, my ROC should be in the range of 25% plus, 20, 20, 25%. Basically, basically, at 720 crore of gross block, or 750 crore of gross block, seven times to 5,200 crore kind of a top line. Seven and a half percent meaning 400 crores of EBITDA. Your current capital employed is something around 2,050 2, crores. So basically, I'm 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 trying to understand how you will make a 20 percent ROC. Either your margin has to go up, otherwise you will be making 14 and a half to 15 percent kind of a ROC. My capital employed is approximately 1400 crore rupees. And with so the debt equity, like currently your debt equity of September quarter number is around 1560 crores. Your debt was something around 80 crores. And then, you know, another, I think, short term debt of around 334 crores. So if I include all those things and plus, you know, the half half year of profitability which is included. Maybe there are liabilities also against. Uh, so maybe what we can see, Nikhil, our IR person can share the working with you also. But broadly, when we see my capital employed should be in the range of around 1400 to 1500 crore. And that's where we see ki if we are able to deliver a bitta of somewhere in the range of around 350 to 380 crore rupees, my ROC should be in the range of 2025. I think Vijay can share the detail working with you, but I would like to add on a macro level basis. <laughs> the ROC, ROC is a function of a sector. EBITDA and your networking capital. Now, as I alluded to in one of my earlier uh, answers to one of the questions, is that as we are scaling up, we are bringing in uh, customers with high wallet. So, mm -hmm. if I have to do a 5,000 crore revenue, I cannot do it with a 50, 60 crore basket of customers. I have to bring in, and in fact, I have brought in customers who have to be 200, 300, 400, 500 crore customer. So the moment there is a customer which is worth 500 crores, the inventory and the working capital level with that customer goes down significantly. So once the revenue goes up to what level we are targeting and what we have achieved, the profile of the customer will take a turn. It will be a different profile which will result into lower working capital, networking capital. And once there is a lower networking capital, it has a direct impact on the ROSI. Okay. 
Okay, so basically you are saying this uh, cash conversion cycle of 80, 90 days uh, will further reduce once you change so this kind of... It is at about 72 days. My networking capital is about 72 days. We are endeavoring and targeting to bring it, bring it down. And that's where the operational efficiencies will come in. I'll ask Vijay, request Vijay to share a sort of a model that with a 5,000 crore or 4,500 crore revenue, this uh, working capital, this EBITDA, what will be the ROC? Okay. Okay, sir. I think that okay. will be helpful for everyone. Vijay and Nikhil can share. You can touch, uh, get, uh, in touch with them and they'll share the complete model with you. Sure, sir. And one last, this McKinsey and company which we are hiring, uh, so what would be the cost involved for how much time this cost will be there? And what is the basic, uh, you know, purpose to hire McKinsey and company? What are the key uh, first, things they will be focusing on? is to drive operational efficiency and Sender is leading this project from the front, so he will answer it to you. McKinsey and companies are not the ambassadors in PHs. They are the Mercedes-Benz and BMW. So they come with their costs. Confidential team <laughs> doesn't permit me to share the cost, but McKenzie is McKenzie, so we cannot compare it with Maruti or uh, Hyundai. So the costs, whatever are being incurred, are being expensed over a period of time. We are expensing it, and we have expensed it in the current period also. For confidentiality, we cannot share the costs, but what will this project drive Sinder is leading it from the front, and I hand it over to Sinder to share what uh, benefits we expect to get from this project. And obviously, if we are investing so much, and we call ourselves businessmen, we expect that what we invest will get several times that in our uh, uh, projection. Sure, sure. All right, um, Satendra here. Uh, I think to quickly add on to what Mr. Gujral said, uh, this is a period of investment for us as Sharma SES. I talked to you about investment in plant. I talked to you about investment in people, and this is investment in the process plus business strategy. That's the third piece. Uh, we are working with the, the firm, and uh, we are looking at the operating efficiencies. That's one part of the things. And secondly, we are also looking at the business strategy for the future as to where we will double down and where we would say it's business as usual for future. So those are the two main areas where we are focusing uh, with our own resources and with the, uh, with the uh, outside help. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Hardik Rawat from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, please. Yeah. Just wanted to know the segment-wise gross margins. Yes. What are the segment-wise? Um, uh, when we were, uh, we have been asked by your clients and there's been a pushback from the clients because when we declare the quarterly, uh, sort of the gross margin client-wise, they always come back to that you are earning this much, we are earning that much. So we have refrained from publishing that. But nonetheless, in our meetings and one-to-one -one calls, you can get back to BJ and uh, Nikhil. They will share the figures with you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Arfat from Incred. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. I'm taking a question. I'm audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please continue. So, my question is again on margin, sir. Let's say if you exclude uh, a Johari, which is 30%. So, then our margin is 4.4%. So, you don't think it's very low compared to law, what we have delivered in the past. And again, let's say if you in the last quarter also around 7% and that goes to 9.3%. So any thought on that, that we have done just 4% margin in case in this quarter? So it's 4%. Bijay will share the details with you. So again, it's a, it's a, it's a seasonality thing for Johari is what we are saying. So 
we cannot look on a quarter and quarter basis on full year basis we see definitely it is related to the volume numbers also last quarter they did about 30 odd crore this quarter we are expecting much better revenue thing because depending upon the order book and which quarter in which quarter those are scheduled that way so if we expect the performance to be similar to the last year in this particular financial year and again post the joining of the new ceo the entire next year strategy work is going on so going forward we expect that kind of a growth which gujarat has already explained to you and we now see the company as in totality and not in bits and parts so there is no north south divide in a lighter way as the political people call it so we see our business in uh, as a composite in totality so someone will be driving margin someone will be driving growth someone will be driving the cash flows someone will some vertical will be driving the uh, asset turn so what we have to see is what we put as a composite thing on the table the acquisition was done with a certain objective and now it's part and parcel of our business okay so last question again on jori let's say uh, it is 30% a bit and so any how this business so we can let's say add to let's say help to add the margin on the console basis for you said uh, uh, what will be the contribution of the jewelry to the consolidated figures yes yes point right. forward let's say for fp5 you're looking at percent growth so so you uh, so the jewelry should double right in this case which the jewelry would be less than 5% of our total revenues going forward so if i am expecting i am just taking a off the cuff figure of 4500 crore business or 4000 crore business jewelry does 200 it's only 5% of the business yeah. so it will not be a dominant player in the revenues but it will be contributing a decent amount to the beta yes, yes yes so um, again what kind of revenue are look jewelry for fp25 looking uh, to grow this year about 20 to 25% in uh, fi24 25 fine fine sir that so thank you yeah. thank you very much The next question is from the line of Ashutosh Paras Parathar from Mirabels Investment Trust. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Vipin Goyal, this side from Mirabels. Hi, uh, Vipin. Just one question on the uh, order book side. You mentioned that you have got some order on the industrial front, and it appears that uh, I mean until till last quarter about hundred hundred ten crores kind of intake we are uh, doing. Which has now jumped to 170 crore uh, kind of number. If I just back uh, back calculate that number, uh, so can you just provide some color, some clarity on the kind of product that we are doing on the on this on this new order and the margin profile, possible margin profile of this uh, uh, particular order. Also on the size, if you can just give some color. Very very helpful. Thank you. In industrial, I don't know what figure you are referring to. We did about 1955 last quarter, which is more than 650 per month. In nine months, we have done 5,700 crores, which is again more than uh, 650 per month uh, revenue. Sorry, I'm talking about the order order intake. Order intake. So I'm saying the order intake. Oh yeah, sorry, I was talking to million. Sorry, 5708 million. Sorry, sorry. So 570 crores. Order intake. Vijay uh, shared with you that industrial is approximately 30 to 35 percent of order book currently. Which is from industrial segment over here, which is approximately 1300, 1400 crore rupees. And these would be in the energy sector, the power sector, power supplies, uh, 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 industrial cleaning. Industrial metering. Yeah, energy, energy storage, energy metering. So we have uh, comparatively better margin profile. The industrial vertical historically has had a better gross margin profile than the consumer. Okay. Uh, particularly, just on the order intake of this quarter, uh, is it that uh, is it a large one single entry order? Is it like a mix of multiple orders? It is a mix of multiple orders. We we don't have exact figure what was the order intake into this quarter. We have a total order book with us as of now, but yes. It is a mix of multiple customer-related orders and multiple application-related orders. Complete. 
when the order balance which is 4500 crore which is shared with you that uh, out of this approximately 40 odd percent is consumer is 40 for consumer is approximately 40 odd percent and industrial is in 30 30 consumer is about 45 margin profile of this orders of these orders the industrial orders see margin again i said industrial orders are better than the consumer orders and uh, it will uh, not increase the uh, gross uh, the sort of uh, it, uh, it will increase the gross material margin and it will not increase the material cost as a percentage of the sale okay okay uh, so just one uh, one more question uh, so this quarter you said that 100 crore has kind of been pushed to uh, the next quarter in terms of execution uh, but in the gross margin that should uh, isn't isn't it that their gross margin should have uh, declined because of that this quarter the so gross margin because material it will goes into the finished goods sir it affects my inventory it doesn't uh, uh, ma- margin decline you right it will impact on the absorption of overhead got it. okay okay so if my sale 100 crore sale had happened assuming 74% is the material cost i'm taking so 74 crores my inventory would have come down my sale would have gone up by 100 percent 100 crores or whatever and the overhead absorption would have been uh, higher so the operating leverage which in 9 months is about 2.6% would have been high by some maybe 2.5 7% or whatever so it doesn't affect the gross material margin okay makes sense okay thank you sir that's it from my side thanks thank you very much the last question for the day is from the line of anupam goswami from sud life please go ahead Hi sir. <coughs> sir, my question is on the. Uh, Sorry, you're not audible. Hi. Uh, uh, on this in this quarter, what kind of margin we did segment wise? If not, you're not. Uh, was there any uh, change or a uh, degradation in margin in each segment, or is it just because the uh, consumer uh, segment was higher this time that that that's why we we saw the margin uh, being beaten down. So what I shared with you in my opening statement is we very closely work at uh, analyzing the industry-wise uh, uh, gross margins, and we don't see any stress on that. They are stable. That's why if you see a gross material margin has increased from 23.4 percent in Q2 of 24 to 23.9 percent. So in fact, there is a positive. rough and that is because the uh, there is no stress industry wise in the margin there may be some steering somewhere the gross material margin profile is purely linked to the product mix and the industry mix again okay, if i am saying hypothetically purely hypothetically if i was to do 1000 crores of it business IT business would come at a gross margin of about three to four percent. That's what all the industry people are saying, and that's what we also believe in. But it will be highly creative on the uh, what you call uh, asset turn and uh, ROI. So a thousand crore of uh, IT business would uh, change this gross to material margin profile significantly. So what we analyze, as I've been repeatedly saying, is that we analyze industry-wise margin and whether they are changing or not. Whether it's automotive, whether it's healthcare, whether it is industrial or consumer or railways, we are not seeing a stress on that. We see stable margins per se in each of these verticals. Okay. Uh, next question. and uh, when you guided 7 to 8% margin in next year uh, are you uh, taking auto to be you know back to where it was uh, in the proportion or you are, are you uh, continuing with the consumer uh, segment uh, growing at a such rate the uh, over business would be primarily on three legs which is auto industrial and consumer on a long term sustained basis again quarter on quarter is a different thing so we would love the three verticals to contribute about 75% or 80% whether they contribute a secular percentage or it is uh, higher in one and lower in other it's very tough to predict today 
But on a yearly basis, I expect my automotive business to be about within 25%, 27% of the sale? Yes, 20 to 25%. 25% of the sale. Industrial would be the same, maybe growing up in the next year. So the margin profile, as I said uh, to an earlier question, has been uh, communicated, calculated based on the profile of my sales and the operating leverages which would emerge from this thing. And that's why uh, we have arrived at that thing. There's a complete backward exercise which has been done to arrive at that thing. Okay, sir. Okay, so and the last question, uh, in this order book, did we add any more wallet share or customer additions going for, in this order and going forward, uh, is a, how's the pipeline? See, uh, typically when you uh, do a business, you always increase the wallet share with the customer. And that's one of the strengths, that's one of the internal metrics which we uh, sort of used to evaluate, am I doing something good for the customer vis-a-vis -vis my competition? If my growth was to come by seeding market share of existing customers, the growth would be reflected, but the quality of the growth, I would not be satisfied. The quality of the growth is that A, not only you bring in new customers on board, but B, you snatch wallet share from competition. That's the quality of growth and we are focused on both. Okay. Okay, I got understood. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. In the interest of time, that will be the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. J.S. Gujral from for closing comments. Please go ahead. Well, gentlemen, we are in, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are in exciting times. In 37, 38 years of my career in the electronics industry, we have never, ever, I repeat, never, ever seen such a positive macro level tailwind and environment for the electronics sector. We are very, very confident of uh, long-term sustainance of the business with margins. And as Tendra has uh, shared in his comments, we are investing on people, resources, systems. So there would be a short-term cost involved, but the long-term benefits would accrue over a longer period of time. We believe, we believe that Sirma SGS is uniquely placed among the uh, industry peers uh, with a very healthy export component of about 27%, uh, well-diversified product mix, uh, strong R&D which we are investing, and those results have yet to come in. In fact, we have not discussed on that. The design and development efforts which we are putting in will bear fruits in the coming year. The hiring of the CEO for RFID, for medical, would bring in greater revenues in these verticals in the coming year. So the focus of the management is to grow the high margin areas in the coming years and that's why these leadership positions have been filled up so that they can drive the business from the front and it becomes a truly professional managed company divorced from the ownership. Currently the owners are also wearing the functional hats but in the coming years, we would like to pass on this baton to professionals to drive the business so that Sirma becomes a truly board-managed company and is respected. Apart from that, this is a normal financial figure. What we are very focused on is ESG. So we are uh, internally targeting to be sourcing I think a 50% of our energy from green sources over the next two to three years. We are tying up with the uh, 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 renewable energy companies in south and north. Unfortunately, there is a constraint in the supply. So we would like to be a truly global company in terms of systems, in terms of work ethics, and in terms of social and corporate governance. We are very confident 
and we are committed to build this into a world class institution thank you very much thank you very much on behalf of icici securities that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you